All right, so everybody, thanks so much for listening to Fire Breathing Rob. If you're listening to us on YouTube, as far as a platform, please subscribe, like, and share so we can get these numbers out and get these interviews out. If you're listening to us on other platforms, as far as podcasts, or forms, and also on Facebook, Instagram, we also thank you for that. We're going to move into an interview with somebody that I've become fond of, uh, meeting him at this conference, also talking to him for about 40 minutes, actually, before we started the interview. And this is Dennis Glennon, and he is an amazing photographer. And I, I would try to hold up the book, Dennis, but the background won't show this. But the book is <laughs> Buddy's, Win uh, Buddy's Magic Window is the book, A Dog's Little Big Adventure. Again, Buddy's Magic Window, A, Bo a Dog's Big Adventure by Dennis Glennon. Definitely check it out. It did win the Benjamin Franklin Award, which is a huge accomplishment. So, Dennis, thanks so much for coming out. Greatly appreciate the time tonight. Yeah, happy to be here. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, good times, right? All right, so this book is about golden retrievers, and I do want to get into the book and that in general. But first, you know, tell the viewers a little bit about you, Dennis, and what made you want to write the book? I wanted to write the book, um, the whole thing, uh, getting into the book, right? Uh, I wanted to create a book, really, that just made people smile. That was my whole motive. Uh, I just like to make people smile. So even like, right, on like Instagram, Facebook, like I share the photos, right. I share the stories behind the photos, and I, I, it makes me happy, right, to make people smile. That's what, that's what I like. Uh, that's what I enjoy. So, you know, I, I didn't know anything about books. You know, I didn't know anything about publishing. And uh, long story short, uh, a friend of mine was self-publishing and producing award-winning and best-selling books. Mm -hmm. So I ran into him at a big art show. He says, Dan, you got you to gotta do a book with these puppy foals and wildlife. Oh, my God. He, I said, I don't know anything about it, right? He goes, no, nah, I'll help you. I'll help you, right? And I'm like, okay, if you say it, you know. So I'm like, all right. So uh, that, that's what happened. He, he had, at that time, I think he sold like, um, his, he had one book out and it sold over a million copies, right? Wow. I'm like, oh, if he says that, you know, I'm like, and he's a Ben Franklin winner too. So if he's telling me and he's going to help me, I'm like, I, I got to do this, right? So, um. That's what happened, and, um, you know, I was like, I didn't know anything about it. I was kind of nervous about it, I didn't know what to do, you know, and he says, nah, I'll, I'll, I'll help you, and uh, step backwards. He's actually, I met him back in 1995, dating myself, but I met him at a wildlife conference down in Texas, Corpus Christi, and I was talking, you know, I said, I didn't know anybody. I was brand new. I had bad cameras, everything, but I wanted to do this. And I, I sat next to him and his wife, and they were talking. I interjected, like you know, Jersey people do. And I said, hey, what about this? You know, he's like, I would have never thought of that. And he gave me his card. And uh, he says, call me if you ever need anything. You know, I didn't know who the guy was. So thank God, right? The guy standing next to me he goes, you know who that is? I'm like, I, I don't know anybody here, you know? He says, that's, that's Carl Sams. He goes, he's like the best, highest selling print salesman on the art show circuit. I'm about. So I, I tucked it away. You know, I said, oh, my God, thanks for the heads up. So years later, I, I called him. I said, you know, when I started getting good photos, I said, how do I sell prints? What do I do? I don't know. You know, I got images now. And he gave me, he gave me like uh, sales 101. This is exactly what you do. And he says, call me in six months. I'll tell you the rest. So I did. And then I called him. So years, fast forward a few years, I ran into him at the show. And uh, he's like, oh, my God. And so it was like, now you got to do a book. That's your next step. So that's what happened. Yeah, it's fun. You know? so, so let's talk about the title. How did that... I guess I, I guess I'll ask it this way. As far as the title goes, how did you get that title? Was that something that you know you knew? Uh, you know, because we go to Buddy and everybody. I feel like Buddy is a common dog's name. So is this like a dog that you had in the past that you wanted to kind of frame this story about? Or that's an interesting question. So you talk about um, serendipity, right? Serendipity. So. I, I, I was, I was at a frame shop walking up. I was working part time there. Um, and I, I, I would work there like, like Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and I would go do my art shows, um, on the weekends and then during my, and then I would, I it gave me a lot of flexibility to go photograph. So I'd work a couple of hours and then their, their busy hours were, were my slow hours. So it worked out perfect. Right. And I got to frame all my stuff in the shop. And this and that it was a good deal for everybody. Mm. So, a woman walked in 
and she says, you know, I, I've been hearing about you. You're a photographer. I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. She says, um, she says, will you photograph my dogs? Now, I had, like, thousands of people. How could you photograph my dogs? So I was doing art shows. Nobody ever called, right? So I'm like, yeah, 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 call me, call me, right? She did. She called. I said, oh, my God. And I don't ever want to embarrass myself. So I said, um, she said, Ben, I'm going home in two weeks. we got to make this happen. I'm like, oh, God. So I drove around town looking for a spot to uh, take the photos. So I called her. I said, Trace, Trace. I said, you know that lady with the, the big house down, you know, around the corner from you down the street? I said, uh, I said, I, she goes, yeah, they're, they're taking a puppy. I said, oh, my God, yeah, 8.30 Saturday morning, make it happen. So in the meantime, right, so in the meantime, I, I was going to her house. I'm like, if I'm going to do this, I got to do it right. That's my nature. I'm all in. Once I'm in, I'm all in. So I don't want to embarrass myself. So yeah. I, uh, I go to her house. I'm playing with the puppies. I get them used to me. So they're relaxed when I'm doing the photo shoot, right? And then I bought a camera, so I'm clicking the I'm clicking the shutter, right? And uh, so the day of the shoot, they're not gonna get afraid of it. It's not gonna spook them, you know. So there was this one puppy, and he was like the most polite puppy, and he would sit there, you know, and just wait. All the other puppies were running up and climbing on the crate and this and that and that and the fence and that. I always run to you. He would sit there. So I felt bad, I'm like, oh, so I, I'm like, come here, little buddy, come here, little buddy, you know, so I kept calling little buddy, I'm like, come here, little buddy, and then I eventually, uh, he would work his way through, and I would pick him up and hold him in my hand, and like, he'd fall asleep, he was relaxed, I'm like, this is the man, this is, he has a beautiful head, so it's funny, so I'm like, come here, little buddy, every time I went over, long story short, we do the photo shoot, everything's unbelievable, um, and, um, the people who own the dog, right? So it ended up everybody knew each other. Her mother, who lived on the front end of the property, it was a big piece of property, um, was in the church choir with my mother, and we all knew each other, but we didn't all know it. So, and this is the best part: they named the dog Buddy. <laughs> they named they named the Buddy. No idea. I didn't know what was going on. So, what happened was I saw that that window on the cover of the book. I said, "This, I gotta." I got to get this puppy in the window. I had no idea. I'm off the road. I didn't know the people at the time. So I'm like, how am I going to, I don't know how I'm going to do it. So we got to get this puppy in the window. It's going to be the shop. We get down there Saturday morning, 8.30. Get down to the window. That one pane you'll see on the cover, there's no glass in it. No glass. I'll explain wow. that one. Right? So glass. So I said, Trace, you know, go, go put him in the window. So when we got him in the window, he'd do this, he'd do that, he posed this and that. It was like, I couldn't have planned it. I couldn't have. I, I couldn't have. And uh, I said, oh, my God, this guy's like, and everywhere we put him on the photo shoot, we put him here, he posed, we put him there. And they were from a family of veterinarians, like old school. They had, like, like back in the day, so they'd have all this, like, cool horse equipment and carts and this and that on the property. It was like an outdoor gourmet photo studio. You, you, you know, it was unbelievable. So, like, all of this took 60 maybe 90 minutes i got the best shots of my life i said ding 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 it was like almost too easy it was like almost you know so that that's what happened so i called him little buddy they named him buddy and i saw the window from the road and we all knew each other and bang he was in the window unbelievable Unbelievable. i, I gotta go off topic for a second because you talked about art are those your paintings in the background yeah yeah, yeah. yes wow those are impressive now these are all photos i took um, I wow. took, uh, so I printed them on canvas. Oh, so you see okay. the one, the pointed to the, that's a, that's a barn up in Vermont. And the other one's a mountain scenic I just did over the summer. Uh, wow. Maine. Yeah, a lot of Maine. I've been spending a lot of time up in Maine and Vermont uh, on the East Coast. I spent a lot of time up in Alaska, Montana, photographing. Uh, but oh, wow. lately it's been, I've been on a moose kick. I love, I love, mo moose make me laugh. So uh, we take the kayaks out and photograph them and stuff. Uh, so where are you? Where are you for, for taking pictures of moose? Mostly in Alaska, then, yeah. Alaska and Maine. I got I got some oh. spots in Maine. We rent a cabin. Uh, I don't I don't tell anybody where it is, but uh, we rent this <laughs> cabin. And I could walk down with my kayak, jump in, and like there were days I'd have half a dozen moose, big ones in the wow. pond. We had days where this cabin is. Um, yeah, we had a moose like sleeping on the porch one day. Mm -hmm. uh, we had the mother and the baby swimming right up to the trail that leads to the thing, and they walked. They almost knocked me over. Unbelievable. So, are I don't they friendly anybody. though, Dennis? It depends. It depends. Uh, I I always recommend people um, stay away because they're big animals, and you Blink don't it. know like, any wildlife. Right? It's unpredictable. But 
with that said, I've seen them chase people, uh, especially the bulls in the rut and the, the fall. They're always dangerous. Uh, don't don't get close close to them. The mothers with the babies can be yeah. extremely dangerous and protective. Uh, I wouldn't go close. I got big lenses. And I, I stay safe, but. Uh, with, you know, I've also been very close because sometimes you hike it on these narrow trails, and then for a big animal, right? They sometimes you don't even hear them; they almost right. walk up and knock knock you over. We have, and when I'm photographing, right, I'm out at first light, so we're hiking with like headlamps in the morning. And there's one trail, a couple of trails we go down, and they sleep right off the trail because it's all flat and it's easy uh, access to where they feed. And I tell you, if you slip off the, they have like a, like a kind of like a boardwalk, uh, like a raised thing, because they don't want you to do damage to the vegetation. Yeah. I hear with days where it was wet in the morning, you'd almost slip off. And it, it, sometimes they'd be laying right there. They'd stand up and you're like, he can Whoa. smell them. You're, standing, you're, just, you're looking right into them. You're like, you're a foot away. You're like, ah. <laughs> you know, you're like, yeah. it's scary. Uh, but I've never been, um, well, that's not true. I've, I've never been chased by any. Well, I had some, uh, even at a distance sometimes. You'll see if they if they change their behavior, it's time to back off or get out of there. Um, just, you don't want to stress out the animals. It affects their feeding. Uh, they, you know, if they get stressed out, they'll, they'll leave and they, they need to eat. And, uh, especially the mothers with the babies in the, in the spring. Uh, you don't want to disrupt their, their eating habits. So you, you got to back off and uh, just uh, respect the wildlife here. Yeah. I agree. I don't want to get close to any animal that I don't know that their reactions are going to be. Yeah, yeah, you never know. You never know. Like you said, I'd rather just stay far away. So let's go more into the book, Dennis. Uh, and for people that are just starting to listen, it is Dennis Glennon. He did put out a book, and I, I wish I could show it on screen. Let I got that it, stupid uh, background. <laughs> I, got, uh, I don't know if this will show up. Uh, maybe. Soon it shows yeah, up. it will. It does. Buddy's Magic Window, the little, <laughs> a little dog's big adventure. You can see it on the screen, and I'm going to shut up so you can see it on the screen now. We hope. Yeah, so it's cool. It took the Ben Franklin Award for uh, Best mm -hmm. Children's Picture Book Zero to Three, and it took the best cover. So mm -hmm. it's uh, it was really cool. You know, it's really cool. Um, so I yeah, I didn't know. You know, when you're getting into this, right? I'm a, I'm a, uh, if I'm gonna do something, right? I'm gonna do it right. Like I went all out with hiring the graphic designer. Uh, she's a New York Times uh, award-winning graphic designer. Uh, so uh, designed many many uh, New York Times bestselling books. And she's unbelievable. And uh, even to make things better, she's the, the sweetest person to work with, salt to the earth. Um, and uh, I'll tell you a story. Um, I initially hired a graphic designer from a big, uh, I, I think it was like one of the big six. I, I'm not gonna name them, but it was one of the big six in New York. And she was working on projects like SpongeBob and things like that. So it was like oh. high end and stuff, you know. And I had a very certain thing uh, I wanted um, in mind. I said, I want a pretty simple laid out, just a flow, this and that and that. And a pretty simple design. I want the story to lead. You know, I, I laid out the whole story with the images and I just said, make it nice. Just make it nice, simple. Simple is better. So she was taking forever forever to do this and uh i was like what the heck it does I, I don't know anything about design so to speak except what i wanted i, I think this should take so long so she sends me the copy and uh the cover and it was and i'm like and then uh, she sent me like a couple of sample pages and i'm like i got sick i got sick um i called my <laughs> sister up i said yeah what are you doing what are you doing and i said i got an emergency come by she's like you're okay i'm like no no come on come on i said i'm okay but come on I said, tell her she got there quick. And uh, she says, uh, what's wrong? What's wrong? Are you okay? I said, you got to tell me what you see. And don't hold nothing back. So I clicked on it and she cringed. I'm like, I'm like, yeah, you see what I see? I'm like, oh, and I was sick over this. I was sick. So I'm like, what am I going to do? I hired this person from, you know, big, big time with reputation. This and that. I'm like, I'm like, this is horrifying. I look like, uh, like, like SpongeBob on acid or something. It was bad. It was bad, right? So it really did. It did. And uh, I don't know if you're going to have to edit that out, but um, anyway, so why would that hang over? Um, so anyway, so I'm like, what the, What do I do? So I was so sick. I was literally sick. So I called Carl back. I said, Carl, Carl, I, what, what do I do? I get the situation. I'm so sick. I can't do it. So he goes, why don't you just uh, hire my, he was my graphic designer. 
I said, you cool with that? He's like, yeah, 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 hold on. She's right here. And he puts, her, he puts her on the phone. And this is the guy that hooked me up with the book, you know? And so, and backtrack a little further, Karen was the one that walked in my booth initially and she grabbed Carl and Jean to come in my booth to check out the images. So she kind of connected us. Yeah. And then uh, he's like, he, he puts her, yeah, 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 talk to her. I said, I remember you, you remember me? She's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we start talking. I'm like, you got to do this, right? She's like, then I got I got three books I'm working on, but you know I work fast and uh, I'm gonna finish up. I forget if she told me 30 days, 69, whatever it was. It didn't matter. I said, yeah, whenever you're free. I said, uh, you know, I'll send you the files and whenever you can do it, you do it. That, that's the way it is, you know. So, so okay. So I sent her the files and then she she says I'm I'm finishing up. I'm I'm gonna take a look at it. I think this was a Friday. So I swear to you, I, I kid you not. Um, I, I get like uh, the cover. And like the first 12 pages, like Monday morning, right? And she goes, do you like it? And I said, I said, are you kidding me? I, I, she goes, I, I she goes, then I could have finished it over the weekend. I just didn't want to do 48 pages and not, you not be happy. I'm like, I'm like, go. That's all I said, go. That was it. And that was our conversation. I said, this is what I want, you know, make it happen. And, and it, it was go. And that was it. And she, right. it was done like no time. And we had other things we had to do, but. Yeah. You, I mean, you saw the design, right? Unbelievable. Right. Unbelievable. No, it's unbelievable design. It's funny how fate brought all these people together that you didn't really know a lot of these people knew you or knew somebody that you know. And then all of a sudden, everything just connects, which is great. I wanted to ask you this, Dennis. So how did you make up the story? Because that storyline is a great storyline. Obviously, the pictures are amazing and phenomenal in general. But how did you make up the storyline for the book? It's interesting. Um, as as a wildlife photographer, we spend uh, I, I spend all of us. Uh, we're kind of like uh, nomadic. We spend a lot of time alone because I think like any artist, right? We we have a vision, and uh, we don't compromise. Um, what I what I want, I, I got to go out and get and. So it doesn't, as far as photographing, there's a couple of guys I photograph with, or girls, um, that, that we're on the same page, we know what we want, and sometimes we'll meet at a location, we might separate or we might do it together, but mm. very few, uh, because we're so, we know what we want, we know what we want to get, we know how to get it. And, you guys are um, meticulous, bang. yeah. Yeah, so we're like, bang, and it doesn't always mesh with people's schedule, it's hard to coordinate, so we're kind of individualists. And um, so I was just like, oh, my God. I, I, so we, when I'm traveling, um, I read a lot. I read a lot because it's kind of solitary. And you spend a lot of time in your head, right? And sometimes that's really good. Sometimes not so good. But most of the time, it's really good. And I'm always trying to learn, always. I'm like, oh, what can I pick up? And I'll pick up a book or I'll bring books. I got certain books I travel with um, um, so I read and read and read and I, you get to think a lot, you're staring at the stars, you're thinking whatever, this and that. So I, I, I kind of based it on a little bit of, um, has a lot of influences, right? It's crazy. Um, Walden, uh, Henry David Thoreau was a big, big influence on me. You know, the Bible was a big influence on me. I, uh, the world less traveled. At the time I was writing it, I was actually finishing it. Uh, I was reading, um, Jack Canfield's uh, The Success Principles, but mm -hmm. there was a guy, um, uh, kind of a motivational thinker, uh, way back, uh, who influenced me early. This is back in the early 90s. Uh, Jim Rohn. Jim Rohn talked about, you know, he talked about the seasons and like when you come into the spring, everything's new and you, you kind of like, you know, like a rookie and you're kind of innocent and then you're going to progress through life, right? So you, you're young and innocent, like, well, buddy, he's a seven, you know, he's a seven-week-old puppy, new, everything's new, everything's adventure, he's got to learn, right? And then as you go through the seasons, right? So the spring, it's like a new birth, right? And the summer, you, you, you're growing, you're learning, you're growing. So I wanted to create a, a journey. That was my my thought, like, and, and on a journey, right? Any great journey, life, right? You learn as you go, right? So you pick up wisdom, you pick up lessons. Some are good, some are bad, this and that. And then so the summer is the next season, right? Then the fall, now you start to mature, right? You start to mature wisdoms coming into your head and then this and that. And this is the stuff he talked about. This is the stuff I, I, I like because I could play with my images from the spring all the way to the fall and then go right into the winter. The winter's where, wow, the journey's ended, bang, end the story. Now 
What's going to be next? What's going to be his next adventure? What's going to be his next journey? He's going to start again. He's going to have to learn. He's going to mature. Or you could branch out in any way. So that was the idea, the concept. Um, and I don't, you know, not everybody's going to pick that up. They're not. Right. But as the older, uh, what I find fascinating, like the older readers are going to start picking up on us. They're going to see spring. They're going to see journey. They're going to see, and as I write about it, people, it, it's going to be, it's very layered the way I wrote it. It's simple. Because even like a two-year-old, right, they can flip and follow the stories just by the images. And that's key. That's key. But as the kids get older, um, then it can start reading into, you know, maybe a little heavier. That's my hope. Right. That's, that's what I, I want it to happen. I don't no, know. I think that, yeah, I think it, it, it has happened. Because even reading it, like you said, you have a, obviously, <laughs> you have a different mindset when you're older than you're younger. So yeah. I cut, yeah. So you have that. I, I agree with you. You know, you look at the seasons and the different topics and, and how yeah. it meshes and makes you think better more. And I, I agree with you. So that the book does do that. And so my question is, so how many photo sessions did you have to do with Buddy to do all these? You know, obviously you're going to different places, different spots. I mean, it seems like it was quite quite a lot of, of pictures <laughs> taken. <laughs> It was quick. Uh, it was quick. Uh, really? Most, the majority of the photo. Uh, this is interesting. Um, a uh, little, little inside. You're gonna get some inside scoop because I don't talk about this too much. Um, so <laughs> most of the images, most of them are uh, from that day, that one day. That's how wow. Many That's how good that day was. But we did take them to a second location, and then there was a couple of images. Um, I don't know how many. Not many. But he had, um, I needed like a filler, one or two. So she happened to have another litter with uh, his half brother that looked just like him. Uh, his name was Jack, right? His name was Jack. So I snuck, I'm not going to tell you which one it is, but Jack's in there too. And uh, so that's kind of a little, little secret, you know, like uh, how many lassies there were, right? Right. right. I didn't want to do that, but I'm like, I got to, it. it makes sense. So we had a, uh, he came out, I wanted to fill uh I, I needed some, I had something in my mind I had. I said, I got to get this. And we took him up on it to carry that. So is this a breeder, Dennis, or is this? Yeah, yeah. Oh, friend, okay. My that friend was the... Tracy breeds them, and my friend Patty, um, they, they were uh, co-breeders. And I became very, yeah, I, they're awesome people. Um, yeah. Awesome. Just salt of the earth, big hearts, you know, um, love dogs. Right. Uh, they love helping animals. They like helping people. Just uh, so we became uh, very good friends. Great. I didn't know her at the time. I didn't. I didn't know her. Um, but over the years, we became uh, extremely close. Uh, good people. You know, I, I like that. So let me. You know, ask I, I'm going to throw. I'm going to throw a line at you. I'm going to throw a line. At you. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, I, I say. I say for myself. Like uh, I say, dogs and music bring great people together. That's my line. I agree with that. Let me ask you this, though. Why do you feel that, first of all, two questions before I even go into this. So, Dennis, do you, first of all, do you have a dog yourself? And we'll, we'll start off with that. And right now, no. Oh, no. I don't. Because um, you, you travel why. a lot? Is that why? Yeah, yeah. Okay. exactly. Yeah, I, was, I, I couldn't do it responsibly now. Um, yeah. we, for a long time, I, I was home more and did a lot, a lot of stuff closer, but and we had we actually raised um, Chesapeake Bay Retrievers for over twenty years. Uh, oh, wow. And then, uh, I, then after that, I'm like, I didn't have a dog. You know, they passed on. They last they lived a long time. And then I'm like, I just want to travel and create books and get more photos. So I don't want to leave a dog hung up. Or, you know, so I babysit a lot of dogs, and uh, mm -hmm. I still photograph a lot of dogs. And uh, we play around, but I, I didn't want the responsibility right now. You know? Would you ever get another dog though? Yeah. I love I love dogs. I I love them. I, well, dogs. Yeah, I, 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 what I say, Dennis, is woman will leave you. Dogs will never leave you. <laughs> it was funny. One of the dogs I had, he was we did a lot of training with him. I was home more, and we took him a lot of obedience training. I could take that dog anywhere. He did pet therapy visits. He did. Uh, we had a gym like that. It was like a he man gym, right? And uh, we everybody had a key. So sometimes I, I like to work out at night because my schedule is weird and. Uh, I would take him to the gym with me. So I, I said, his name was Ichabod. I said, Ick, come on, come on, come on, let's go to the car. So I jump in the car and we bam, go down to the gym. I said, come here. So I can go like this, go lay down. And he go lay down. He wouldn't move until I told him to move. And uh, so one guy, I was type funny story. So one guy, nobody liked this guy. He was uh, really abrupt in the box. He make a lot of noise and grunt. You know, the guys in the gym like that. 
So I said, and I knew he was coming in. So I said, I said, hey, go, go in there, over there, over there, right? So I knew that was the bench press that he used. And uh, so he, he was laying there. He wouldn't move. I'm telling you, he was good. So the, the guy goes to lay down the pitch. I said, hey, can he stood up? Like, ah, he totally spazzed out. You know, I told him, my dog stood up scared of the daylight. So we all laughed our asses off. You know? Funny. No, that's classic. That's classic. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I want to. Uh, I'm at the end. I'm going to show you a picture, but um, so so let's end the book. I mean, let's end with this, uh, with the last few questions. So I was going to ask you a question too because I said first, would you get dogs, and then I forgot the question. But I'm sure we'll come back. Uh, I, I want to ask this though, Dennis. My question is: is what do you hope people get out of the book? You know, obviously there's younger viewers, like you said, younger readers rather, and there's older readers. So what do you hope the younger readers get out of the book? And what do you hope the older readers get out of the book? Well, a couple of things. I mean, like I said, the uh, biggest thing um, is for me to have young kids, uh, people my age, people older, grandparents, uh, to smile. If I can make somebody smile, right? I've done something good and that makes me feel good. But here's what's interesting. When I wrote the book, that's really what I had in mind. I want to create something people love. They, they laugh. They have a smile. They learn something. Maybe they gain a little wisdom. You know, simple. Right. You know, that was my goal. But now here's where, where it gets interesting. As you get into the process, uh, the publishing, and then you say after the fact, people, the smart people do it before the fact, right? But me, I, sometimes I'm late to the party. So I'm like... I have to think about marketing and, and sales and this and that. So I said, I have to think about these things, right? So really, really, I just want people to um, to love it, you know, and people to learn. But here's what, what the thing is. I want people to have an appreciation for nature, right, and learn a little bit about nature. And the goal is hopefully with the images will want them want to help animals. That's a big yeah. concern of mine. Maybe rescue, maybe land conservation, maybe wildlife preservation. Those are big causes I, I, I believe in. The other thing which is interesting is that um, you start thinking about these things late. You know, it's like, I really start, I, I read a, a fascinating column by uh, James Patterson. And he was writing kids books on the Jimmy Patterson. And, and it's the thing, I come from a big family of educators, right? Mm. And he, he sort of get lost in the process. And then I, this article hit home with me. He, he said, he gave a, a thing, I think it was in Publishers Weekly, but I, I'm not 100% sure. And he was given the, the st statistics on the literacy rates in the U.S. Mm. And I kind of knew it, and it was just in my face. And I'm like, I got so sick. I said, man, I want to write this book or get this book into as many people's hands to hook them early on reading, and the, the statistics are alarming. If you're not reading by two, three, four, every day, every year that passes, these kids who, if you can't read by a certain age, if you're not proficient by second grade, it's like the statistics are alarming how you really have no hope. So you got, it diminishes quickly. It, it really does. I was I was horrified. Uh, and that's even kind of knowing it, and, but it was so in your face at that moment, you know, something yeah. clicked I really want to get kids an enjoyable book they want to read over and over and over. And I hope it has that spillover where they want to pick up more and more books. That's key. That's key. I, I If I could do that, that's a, a bigger mission. Um, Yeah, that's a big mission. Uh, we have to do that. That would make me uh, very happy. Yeah. Dennis Glennon here on Fire Breathing Rub. Dennis, I want to ask you this. What is next for you? Is there another uh, book coming up about Buddy? Are we going to do Buddy 2 in a, a different window? Or what, what are we thinking next is going to happen? Yeah, yeah um, definitely, without a doubt, um, a series. I want to do a series. But okay. I, got, I got about a dozen titles in my head uh, just with the, with the Golden Retrievers, right. um, with Buddy for sure. Uh, unbelievable, right? But there's so many, it was fascinating. I'll tell you a couple of fascinating things. So, right. So mm -hmm. having the, 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 the dynamic of a puppy and the wildlife in the mix, and then, you know, the writing, it, it's unlimited. It's unlimited. And right. uh, the only cool, kind of cool thing is, you know, I never thought about it. I was, I said, I want to do a series just with the golden puppy and the wildlife. Now I'm thinking, Man, with all my moose photos, I could do a moose kid book. I could do a bear. I could do a landscape. I could do an inspirational. It's like, you know, you, the more you learn, 
the more your eyes are opened up. And I, I network with a lot of authors where it's about the groups and we talk about things. Uh, it's unlimited. You know, if you find your, your passion, right, you find your passion yeah. um, and you follow it hard enough, long enough, and then, bam, you knock down every barrier and, and things, they, they open up for you. But you got to, like I tell people all the time, I said, you got to work hard. You got to start. You, even if you have no idea what you're doing, right? You start and doors start opening. If you don't start, nothing opens. That's that's how I feel. So yeah, there'll be a bunch of uh, there'll be a bunch of books uh, with some photos. It'll be it'll be fun. It'll be fun. Well, I, I love the book now. I've read it a couple of times, and it's a huge hit here. Uh, so people definitely should go out and get the book. So Dennis Glennon, as we end the interview, firstly, can you tell people where they can find the book and get the book? And secondly, can you tell people where they can find more about you in general? Yeah, yeah. The, the best place uh, to get the book, right? Uh, these, the best, you know, is uh, on my website, uh, DennisGlennon.com. What's really cool is that uh, it's uh, as a bunch of my wildlife images, and we're always adding, we're always adding to, to the website. And I just put up uh, about a dozen art shows that I'll be at mostly on the East Coast. Um, so that's up there now. The books are also, you know, people uh, want the keys of uh, Amazon. So it is on Amazon. Get it, same price. Um, on Amazon, uh, you probably get the free shipping if you're, you know, so that, that's good too. So if you want to save some money, get free shipping. Um, I do ship the next day or the same day uh, when possible. So Wow. You, you'll get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We don't mess around. Um, you know, I want to pe make people smile quick, right? So, uh, yeah, the, the DennisGlennon.com, uh, Amazon, uh, the, the, those are the, those are the two uh, best uh, ways to get it. DennisGlennon.com. Definitely check out the book there. Dennis, first of all, thanks so much for spending time with me tonight. Yeah. And I really enjoyed this conversation. And I hope people go to the website and get the book. Again, DennisGlennon.com. Yeah. yeah, thanks so much. Yeah, it's been fun, right? It's a good time. Good time.